Hey everyone, Adam here. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide to profiling guitar and bass amps with a Kemper profiler. Now for those of you that are familiar with the Kemper, it will need no introduction. But for those of you that aren't, this is a really remarkable unit. It works differently to an amp simulator in that it doesn't simulate amps. Instead, it takes a profile of an amp in a specific state. Think of it like a snapshot of an amp on a specific setting, and it does this remarkably well. In fact, it's indistinguishable from the real amp when the profile is set up and carried out well. Now, this can be incredibly useful for a number of reasons. Maybe you've got an old vintage amp that sounds amazing, but it's really unreliable and always breaking down. Perhaps you've got a gorgeous sounding amp, but it's really big and heavy, and so it's inconvenient to carry it to practices and gigs. Or maybe you've booked some time in a local studio that's got an amazing amp selection, and you want to have the sound of those amps outside of the studio when you leave. Well, in all of these situations, taking Kemper profiles would be the perfect solution, whether it's for live use or in the studio. So in this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of profiling amps using a Kemper. Specifically, we're going to be profiling this Ashdown ABM 600 through the Ashdown 6B10 cab, plus this gorgeous limited edition Vox AC15. All of the profiles for both of these amps will be available for you to download. Just hit the link below this video. For maximum versatility, I'll be taking a number of profiles of each amp on different settings with different mics. The Vox AC15 will be profiled on three settings, clean, crunch and driven, using a Shure SM57 dynamic mic, an SE VR1 ribbon mic and a U87 condenser mic. The Ashdown is going to be profiled on clean and crunch settings, and the mics I'll be using for the bass amp include a U87 condenser, the SE VR1 ribbon and a Shure SM57. Now, if you look closely at the cab of this bass amp, there's a tweeter right in the middle. This is incredibly useful to mic up if you want a bass tone with lots of mid range that cuts through. It's unlikely to give you a nice full bass tone on its own, but when blended with one of the other mics, such as the VR1 ribbon or the U87 condenser, it can give you a bass sound that really cuts through the mix. Perfect for pop rock, pop punk, and even modern country music. All of the mics will be running through a Neve 1073 DPD preamp that's just in the desk behind me here. So that's six profiles of the Ashdown bass amp and nine profiles of the AC15 when you take into account all of the different settings and the different mics. But I haven't stopped there. I'm going to be taking profiles of both of these amps on all of the settings I've described using the Slate ML1 and ML2 mics through the Slate VRS8 preamp. So that means if you own the Slate virtual mic collection, you can use the ML1 and ML2 profiles on your Kemper and then choose the mic and preamp that you want to use yourself in your own DAW. So that's actually 10 profiles of the Ashdown bass amp and 15 profiles of the Vox AC15. This truly does give you an insane amount of flexibility for getting amazing sounds out of these two stunning amps. And they're all yours available to download. Again, just to hit the link below this video to download them. So let's get started and I'll talk you through the process of profiling an amp using a Kemper. The first and most important part of profiling an amp is to make sure you've got a great sound coming through your monitors from the amp and mics you've got set up. The Kemper will profile an amp with remarkable accuracy. So if you haven't got a great sound to begin with, then you won't make a great sounding profile. So spend some time experimenting with different mics and different mic positions on the speaker cab to make sure you're capturing the best sound possible. Once you have that, then you're ready to profile. So this is the studio where I'm going to be doing the profiling. Excuse the mess. Um, and this is the Kemper. Now I've got it out of the rack because I need access to the back. Now you notice that I haven't got the amps set up in here. And there's a few good reasons for that. 
the room itself, you'll notice that there's lots of these broadband absorbers. There's loads of sound treatment. So these broadband absorbers go all the way around the room. We've got bass traps in the corner. And we've got these huge ceiling clouds, which are double thickness up above. Now, these make the room sound really, really dead, which is perfect for recording things like vocals and acoustic guitars. Uh, but also, crucially, they make it a really great mixing environment. So whenever I mix, those mixers translate and they sound exactly the same outside of the room as they do in here, which is really important. What all this treatment doesn't do is make this a great environment for recording anything where you need a little bit of ambience and space. So things like drum kits are a complete no-go in here. And also, guitar amps. So for that reason... I've got the guitar amp set up in the next room, which is actually a living space. We've got sofa, TV, piano over there in the corner. Now you can see the boxes in position here. These are all the microphones that I'm using. But instantly, this is just a much bigger space. The room is much larger. There's also this stairwell here. So the ceiling goes up at the back. And it just sounds better for recording amps in here. There's more space for the sound to develop. Um, I'm not intending on capturing a lot of the room sound. I'm actually close mic in the guitar amps. But they just don't sound as boxy. They don't sound as choked and as closed in. So it's really, really important to make sure that the room you're recording in sounds great. And if it doesn't, then move to a different room and find somewhere where whatever it is that you're recording, in this case guitar amps, sounds its best. So these are the connections that you need to make to profile an amp. Your guitar needs to be connected to the input of your Kemper, right here. The direct out of your Kemper needs to be connected to the input of your amp. On some Kempers, it's called send. And the output of your microphone preamp then needs to be connected to the return of the Kemper. Okay, so once you have everything set up, the profiling process itself is pretty simple. All we have to do is make sure our Kemper is switched to profiler here at the top left, and then you met with this screen here, profiling system one out of three. Now, there's two tabs here at the top, Kemper amp and reference amp. For this first page, you wanna make sure that you clicked onto the reference amp. That's going to allow you to monitor your amp coming through your mic and your signal chain, whatever it is that you're profiling. And so this is the point where you need to make absolutely sure that you're happy with the sound. So now is your last chance to go tweak any microphone positions um, or anything if you're not happy with the sound. You've also got a dial down here for the return level. It's just a case of adjusting that so that when you're playing the guitar, the output of your Kemper isn't clipping. Once that's set and you're happy, we'll just click next. And we'll go to the second page. Now here you met with EQ, bass, middle, treble and presence. If you had the treble on your amp cranked, for example, well then you could crank it on here so that it will save that as a cranked treble profile. However, on mine, I've got the EQ set fairly flat. So I'm just going to leave these on zero because you can always add more treble, bass, mid, presence when when you're using the profile and you can always take some away as well. So I'm leaving those flat. If you are profiling a distorted amp, you need to make sure that it's the distorted button that's pressed in. If it's a clean one, you press the clean one. If you were profiling an amp without a speaker, so no cabinet, then you could click that third button along there. Once all that's set, we just hit the last button to start profiling. It's gonna send some really weird alien noises through the speaker. Uh, it's gonna sound like the world's ending, but it takes literally just a couple of minutes and the profile is done. So let's do that now. And there we have it, it's completely finished. Now, 
on this final page, you can now flick between the Kemper amp and the reference amp. So that's going to allow you to listen to what the Kemper has profiled while ever Kemper amp selected. And then you can check that with the reference amp. So that switches back to your amp through the microphone, etc. Um, and it's usually pretty spot on first time. There are some parameters down here that you can tweak, things like tube shape, uh, power sagging, which is a bit more to do with you know how the amp feels when you're playing it. It might be worth just tweaking these to match your particular style of playing. Uh, pick and clarity, if you want a bit more pick definition, you can knock that up a touch. You can also hit this third button along, which says refine profile. If you hit that button, and play some notes, play some chords through the Kemper just for a couple of seconds, it will just refine the profile and, and make a lot of these changes automatically. Once you're happy, all you have to do then is click store and then you can save the profile and that's it. So thank you for watching. I hope that video has been useful for you. Before I owned a Kemper, these two amps were my absolute favourites and they worked the way onto pretty much every project that I ever did. The Vox just sounds stunning. It's got such amazing cleans that sound really glassy and really chimey. And it also drives really well. You can get a gorgeous crunch sound and overdrive sound out of it. And the best part is it really responds to your playing. When you dig in on the amp, it breaks up, but then when you back off a little bit, it cleans up as well. And all of that has been profiled in these profiles for you. It's not a particularly high gain amp, but if you do music that needs to be high gain, you can put pedals in front of it and it responds really well to them. It takes things like tube screamers, fuzz pedals, 
whatever you want to put in front of it really, really well. The Ashdown ABM bass amp is also an incredible bass amp. It's so versatile. If you want a bass sound that really cuts through and sounds really aggressive, well, then you can crank up the mids, crank up the treble, and crank up that valve overdrive, all of which I've profiled in these profiles for you. And you will get a really aggressive bass sound that cuts through any mix. Pop rock, pop punk, modern country music. It's perfect for all of that. If you want a bass sound that is a bit more reined in, much cleaner and deep, well, then you can back all of that stuff off. You can set the EQ fairly flat and you can knock the valve overdrive all the way off or all the way down. And you will just get a super clean, deep bass sound. So that's the reason that I wanted to profile these amps and make them available to you so that you can enjoy the sound of them too. All you have to do is click the link below this video and it will take you through to a page where you can download and enjoy them for yourself. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the profiles. See you soon.